Bibles this morning. Turn with me back to 2 Chronicles chapter 7 this morning. 2 Chronicles chapter 7. church. We want to hurry up and sing. Hurry up and get through the preaching. Hurry up and take up the offering. Hurry up and get back home. Why? We're all in a hurry. What are we in a hurry for? I know the last two weeks it was for me and, and for the evangelist, it was uncharted territory. And we did a lot of him looking at me and me looking at him like my shoulders hurt. <laughs> but if we if we genuinely want to enjoy the presence of God, got to get over this foolishness of trying to rush into church. <clears throat> rush through the song service. Rush to the preaching. <clears throat> rush to the offering. And rush out the door. I think part of the reason we experienced what we did these last two weeks is number one in our prayer. It absolutely was because of prayer. Mm -hmm. Nobody was in a hurry. Nobody was in a hurry. And when we get out of that mindset of being in a hurry, we show the Lord that he is more important to us and I'm just as guilty as the next person sitting in a service thinking when is this going to be over my belly button's pressing against my backbone I can't wait to get to the restaurant I can't wait to get home because I know what's in the crock pot or the oven or whatever Time to slow down. Hear from God. And experience Him. In 2 Chronicles chapter 7, look with me at verse 1. Now, when Solomon had made an end of praying, the fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifice, and the glory of the Lord filled the house. And the priest could not enter into the house for the, of the Lord because the glory of the Lord had filled the Lord's house. Verse 14, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Father, thank you for the privilege to be back in your house this morning. Father, if we thank you for eternity, we'll never be able to thank you enough for what's taken place the last two weeks here in our church. Lives have been changed. You have been worshipped. People outside of our church have been affected with the gospel of Christ. Now may they be infected with the gospel of Christ. Father, I pray for the young woman that we gave a Bible. I pray that she would read it. 
Mm. And because of that, that she would come to put her faith and trust in you. Mm. For all those others that we we come in contact with, Father, help them. Help them to be saved. Help them to get the help that they need. Father, I thank you for all of those who visited these past two weeks. Father, I know that some of them expressed to me on the way out the door that they got help. And I thank you for that. Father, I ask you to bless the reading of your word this morning. Bless the service. I pray that you would be our most welcome guest this morning as it is your house. Father, I stand before you the most needy person in the service this morning. I need your help. Precious Holy Ghost of God, anoint me with that fresh oil that it takes to make preaching. Give me unction that I might function this morning. Dear God, glorify your Son. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Most revivals are just, they're good. They're ordinary. Timely. Planned. They normally don't have a lot of lasting effect, but they are very seldom memorable. I mean, even the evangelist said that he didn't remember anything like what we've experienced the last couple of weeks <laughs> since the early 90s. Mm -hmm. That's a long time. Yes, it is. So I'm going to look this morning at 2 Chronicles chapter 7, maybe answer some questions for us. Why this revival? Why this revival? What made this revival different? In 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verses 1 and 2, and then in verse 14, we see number one, because it was scriptural. Was scriptural. When you do what God says in His Word to do, then He will bless your obedience. Amen. I mean, verse 14, we know verse 14 by heart, probably most of us, and it's it's a conditional promise. Yes, it's to Israel. But if the big question, if who? My people. Which are called by my name shall what humble themselves yeah. it was scriptural we we met the the scriptural requirements to have revival and part of the being scriptural was that we made much of the word of god amen yes, sir. the bible was promoted yeah. it wasn't what the pastor thought it wasn't what the evangelist thought it wasn't what the people thought it was what thus saith the lord That's why it was scriptural. The Bible was not only promoted, but the Bible was preached in purity and in power. Mm -hmm. Every time. You cannot say every service because we didn't have preaching every service. That's true. Because sometimes God chose to just manifest his presence in such a way that there was no preaching. That's right. Yes, sir. People say, oh, preacher, that's just a bunch of baloney. Mm -hmm. No, no, it's what? not. I can name for you three services that will live on in my mind until my mind is gone. When I sat right there in that chair and felt the presence of God move past me. Mm -hmm. And I looked at the evangelist and he looked at me and it's like, mm. <laughs> yeah. I believe my wife sang that song about uh, 12 or 16 times that night. Yes, sir. It was such a holy moment that nobody wanted to move mm -hmm. for fear of breaking the spirit. Mm -hmm. The Bible was promoted. It's all about God and His Word. Mm -hmm. If we're going to if we're going to continue to see revival, we're going to have to figure out what this blessed old book says, and we are going to have to obey it. Yes, sir. 
Yes, sir. It's not just a decoration on the shelf. When I was growing up, it was also oh popular to come out of church and throw your Bible in the back windshield of the car, and that's where it stayed until next Sunday when you bothered to take time to go to church. That's right. Church parking lots were full of cars. And then in those days, those big old cars with huge back windows yeah. with what used to be a red Bible, but now it's pink because the sun has washed the color out of the leather. And it is a pathetic testimony to God's people that do that. That's right. Amen. But we've got to continue to make much of the Word of God. It's got to be promoted. It has got to be preached in purity and power. And the Bible these last two weeks has been proven in answers to prayer. Amen. We see answers to prayer. Yes, sir. Why? Because God allowed our will to be in line with his. Mm -hmm. you, can, you can pray for whatever you want to pray for, but there's some things that we pray for that we're just plain wasting our time and our breath because God is not going to answer it. That's right. Because it's not his will. Mm -hmm. So it is our job, if you will, to find out what the will of God is and get in it and pray in the will of God. What happened this week? Well, we, these last two weeks, we experienced revival because it was scriptural. Secondly, we experienced revival because it was spiritual. Mm -hmm. It was spiritual. Look at 2 Chronicles 7, verse 2. And the priests could not enter into the house of the Lord because the glory of the Lord had filled the Lord's house. And when all the children of Israel saw how the fire came down and the glory of the Lord upon the house, they bowed themselves with their face to the ground upon the pavement and worshiped and praised the Lord, saying, For he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Amen. It was spiritual. It was leadership in the service, and it wasn't me. It wasn't the evangelist. God was leading in the services. Amen. Yes, it was. We tried not to make a move unless we thought that that's how God wanted us to move. Too many times, we have an agenda. We want to do things. And we fail to say, not my will, but thy will be done. That's right. Too many times we live our lives like, not thy will, but my will be done. There was leadership in the service. Not only was there leadership in the service, but there was liberty in singing. Mm -hmm. Never in my wildest dreams did I think that he would throw me under the bus and have me sing that song with him. I've been singing that song with his CD for 15 years. And then he gave me a compliment Friday night at Waffle House. He said, brother, he said, uh, the last time we sung that, you, you did real good. You stayed on pitch and everything through the, almost the whole song. <laughs> well, thank you, I think. <laughs> there was liberty. You see, we live in a day and an hour when, when people who call themselves Christians want to use Christian liberty to justify doing anything and everything that they want to do. They're fulfilling their stinking flesh instead of fulfilling the will of God. That's right. Yes, we have liberty to live our life in such a way that it pleases God. And if we live our life in such a way that it pleases God, then God will be pleased to manifest His power and His presence through our lives. Right. When was the last time you were around somebody and you could just, for lack of a better term, feel the presence of God? Mm. We don't get that much anymore. I mean, let's face it, church. People, we have a bunch of Christians today that are like Eutychus. Probably not too many people have heard a sermon about Eutychus. Brother John Burt did. He was the one, you know, was half in, half out. Mm -hmm. Sitting on the windowsill while, while the Apostle Paul was preaching. And as they say down in, down in Hallville, he done fell out. That's right. Fell out and died. Yes, sir. 
God raised him from the dead. Man, what a service. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid we need we need that in our independent fundamental Bible believing churches today. We got a bunch of people in churches that are part of the way in, part of the way out. They're just not sure. By the way, that's everybody's so up in arms about the, the mass exodus from the church during COVID. Church, all COVID did was re is manifest the hearts of people and show people where they really were. Yeah, that's right. It was scriptural, it was spiritual. Thirdly, it was sacrificial. Look at verse 7 of chapter 7. Moreover, Solomon hallowed the middle of, of the court that was before the house of the Lord, for there he offered burnt offerings and the fat of the peace offerings because the brazen altar which Solomon had made was not able to receive the burnt offerings and the meat offerings and the fat. In other words, the people from the king all the way down were so moved of God that they literally gave and gave and gave and gave to the point that Solomon had to set up a secondary place to do the sacrifices because they couldn't handle it all where it was normally done. When was the last time churches took up an offering and was like, boy, we need to tell these people back off a little bit because we just don't, we just can't receive all of this. It doesn't happen. But what we saw these last two weeks, people gave sacrificially. We gave him 1,277 dollars. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know what that did? Almost totally paid for his Alaska trip. Amen. God used every person that gave in the offerings the last two weeks to provide his trip to Alaska. Now you wonder why he was sick the first week? There you go. Sometimes things, bad things happen to good people so that God is moving and, and orchestrating things in such a way that he can bless people. And it's absolutely obvious to, to me and to him that God has allowed this to make sure that his needs are met so that he can go to Alaska and he can minister to those people in Alaska. Church, whatever happens in Alaska, we get that on our account just the same as he gets it on his account. Why? Because we are in partnership with him. Amen. Because you gave, the man of God's needs were met, and now he can go to Alaska and then have to worry about, it. how am I going to pay my credit card off? He shared with us that gas is eight dollars a gallon. Yeah. Last I remember, a box of Oreos was like eight or ten bucks. <coughs> Should be eating that stuff anyway. Anyway, that's another message for another day. It happened because it was sacrificial. We prayerfully sacrificed. And we personally sacrificed. Or it couldn't have been done. Lastly, the last reason that we saw revival these last two weeks, because it was supported. Yes, sir. It was supported. Look at verse 4. Then the king and all the people, all the people offered sacrifices before the Lord. And King Solomon offered a sacrifice of twenty and two thousand oxen and an hundred and twenty thousand sheep. So the king and all the people dedicated the house of God. It was supported by God. God met with us every service. Amen. Yes, he did. And he blessed us with his presence. It was supported by God's people. I was absolutely thrilled at the attendance that we had of our own people. Yeah. I would have loved to have seen every member in every service every time. But I understand things happen. Mm -hmm. 
But I'm telling you, if you lay out of a service to paint your toenails, then you got problems. That's right. Well, preacher, you know, I wash my hair on Thursday nights. I can't come. Well, bless your poor pitiful heart. Well, preacher, you, you know, you know Fridays is my bingo night. So explain to me why bingo is more important than God. You see, that's why we don't see revival on a consistent basis, because we are too concerned with other stuff. Yeah, that's true. Until we get so consumed with God and God only, then this is just going to be a distant memory. That's true. But if we really want this, it can continue right on. Because we've been given the conditional promise, if my people, yes. are we not God's people? If we know Christ is our Savior, we are his people. Right. Then it can, we won't have to just look back and say, boy, you remember in 2023 when we had that two-week revival and how God <laughs> met with us? We can, we can, at whatever point that is, we can say, you remember, boy, that revival started it all. But man, how God was meeting with us. Amen. That's right. But we've got to be willing to pay the price and keep paying the price. We've got to want him more than necessary food. Oh, preacher, there you go with that fasting stuff again. Yeah. And it's not always just pushing away from the table. Or something. <laughs> How about sometimes we fast our time, talents, and treasures? Mm -hmm. So, Pastor, why did the revival happen? It happened because of a scriptural because it was spiritual, because it was sacrificial, and because it was supported. It was supported by God, it was supported by God's people, and it was supported by God's people giving. What are we going to do from here? <coughs> I don't know. It's up to us. If we want it to continue, we're going to have to continue to do what it took to have revival in the first place. If we continue to do that, God will continue to meet with us. Yes, He will. But the problem is, familiarity breeds contempt. We get so used to it, it's like, oh, yeah, just another church service, just another song, just another offering. Don't get stuck in that rut. Don't do it. Don't do it. Let's take what has happened these last two weeks and in our own personal lives, let's throw a little gas on the fire. You ever been around the fire where somebody oh, yeah. throws a little gas on it? Oh, yeah. It can be a real big fire and it's <laughs> Seen it. I've seen it on the fire department. I've seen it in the church. Spiritual fire. The big question is are you willing? Am I willing? Will I pay the price? Let's stand to our feet. Our heads are bowed. Our eyes are closed.